Do you enjoy fighting games with Dread Jumping Online? Well, today I've got 5 tips I can give you that might help you gain confidence while fighting other players online. The tips I'm about to share can be applied to any fighting game, but I'm basing it all on Street Fighter VI, which is the game I've been focusing on. Alright then, let me highlight one of the many appeals of fighting games first. It is the closest you can get to being an anime character, using superhuman special martial arts skills while fighting other combatants. In real life, if you want to spar, you can join a dojo and do your favorite martial arts. But, if you want the fighting and the hype of throwing fireballs, you go to fighting games. And, if you love martial arts in real life and have an interest in fighting games, well, all the better. Just like getting better at martial arts, fighting games will require training and repetition. So, with that in mind, let's go over the steps you can use to improve your skill and get more confidence. You must train the execution of moves. It is a bit frustrating trying to throw a special move and have nothing come out or use a special move but end up throwing a normal attack. To mitigate this, you should be mindful of what type of control you'll be using. Are you going for an arcade fight stack? A controller? If using a controller, are you moving your character with the directional pad or the analog? In my experience, using the directional pad to move my character has always felt natural, but recently I've come to realize the analog is just as useful. In a sense, it will be the closest you get to the feel of playing with an arcade fight stick while still using a controller. It helps with circular motions such as when throwing a Hadouken, double circular motions used in specials and doing that little shuffling back and forth dance you might have seen the pros doing if you've watched tournament footage for example. The shuffling hesitant movement is done for a reason, defense, which will be covered a bit further. Going back to the controls, once you've decided what you'll be using, you must hit the lab, which is a fancy way of saying training mode. And here is where you can perform a few drills or exercises, again, just like if you were doing martial arts in real life. But, instead of performing 20 push-ups and 20 jabs, you'll be trying to throw a number of special moves in sequence without missing the input. Moving your character without accidentally jumping or crouching, aside from performing and understanding what type of motion you'll be doing in your controller to pull off the special arts. Then, after you've nailed on the left side, try doing the same on the player 2 position because you want to be able to perform all actions on both sides of the screen. Then, you train a few moves you can rely on, for instance, basic combinations of attacks that you can use to deal some damage to opponents. What you want to do is to learn a few of them by heart. Little by little, you'll develop the muscle memory and the hand dexterity for more difficult combinations. Learn how to defend. One of the most important skills to develop while fighting online isn't really knowing how to pull off the long, devastating combo strengths, but rather knowing how to block. It's important to forget the habit of attacking at every moment like you can do when fighting the CPU on lower difficulties of normal. One simple thing you can do while playing online and your skill level is still in the early stages of development is to take advantage of your opponent's mistakes. You can start by blocking their attacks and punishing them with your own. Here's when you can put in practice the reliable combinations mentioned in the previous section. In the training mode, you can set the dummy to be controlled by the CPU and practice a safer playstyle by blocking as much as you can. As your confidence, hand dexterity and overall familiarity with the game improves, you'll want to gradually increase the CPU level. It won't mimic the unpredictability of finding another player, but the more aggressive and skillful CPU will no longer be a pushover forcing you to adapt to things such as longer combos or more advanced defensive maneuvers. You can practice by fighting the higher level CPU in a versus mode, but it's best to increase the level of the CPU in training mode, which is where you can fight without cutscenes and other interruptions for a long time and use different options your training mode has to offer. The fifth step is a change in mentality. A mental workout, if you will. Let me explain. Do you get overjoyed upon winning a match? Probably, right? I get it, winning feels good. But what about the opposite? Do you feel mad when you lose, start cursing, almost throws your controller at the wall and then rage quits? Well, that's not good for anyone's mental state, right? So keep this in mind. In the context I'm exploring in this video, winning doesn't matter and losing doesn't matter. All that matters is improving at the game you're trying to get better at. Therefore, an interesting tactic would be getting familiar with the fact that losing an online match isn't a big deal, or even winning. Try not to get too attached to the highs and lows of winning or losing. What you can do to not be afraid of losing online matches is simple. Lose online matches. No, really. You can hop online in some casual matches and intentionally let your opponents win, just to show yourself that losing ain't a big deal. 
Another way you can trick your mind is kind of wanting to lose the online match. Because if that happens, you got what you wanted. If not, and you get the W, well, that's fine too. It kinda sounds like a concept coming straight out of stoicism philosophy, like the premeditation of evils, and you'd be surprised at how well it works. After a few matches of intentionally letting your opponents win to show yourself that losing doesn't mean much, you go with the mindset of, again, not trying to win, but trying to apply what you practice in training mode to learn what works and what needs refining. You will gradually see that the joy is not just in winning, but in improving your skill at the game and ultimately having fun with the discovery process. And that's it! There are more tactics you can use to get better and more acquainted with fighting games while losing the fear of jumping online, but for now, these are 5 steps you can start with. My rank in Street Fighter 6 isn't the highest yet, I'm a road warrior on a journey towards improvement, but I believe these tips, which I'm also using, can help any other fighting game enthusiast out there to go from chump to champ.